Hello friends. In the previous lectures, we have gone through understanding what is a circuit element. We have gone through the definition of voltage, current, and power. We learned that there are dependent and independent sources, and we did a number of problems based on passive side conventions. Now we are going to start another topic, which is called voltage and current laws, in which we will be dealing with the definitions of nodes, paths, loops. And branches. And we will come to my favorite part. We will be introducing the laws of KCL, KVL, right? Then we will be studying how resistors are connected in series and parallel, and how to simplify these circuits. How to simplify series and parallel circuits. And then finally, we will be dealing with voltage and current division. Of course, we will not be covering all these things in one lecture, but we will be covering one lecture, one topic, and we will be covering problems also as well. So we might have separate lectures on problems also. However, the theory will take maybe one lecture per topic. So let's not waste any time and let us just directly start the topic. Let me just draw a simple circuit here for you. So this is an independent circuit element, right? Like what you learned, we have two resistors, and I am having two resistors here as well. Right. So when I used to tell that this resistance is R1 ohm, this resistance is R2, R3, and R4, we never bothered about what is connecting these resistors, right? What is connecting in the sense we didn't bother about these circuit elements here. It's so not circuit elements, the circuit wires, the wire which is connecting the individual circuit elements. So that is because we never we have an assumption that these wires do not carry actual resistance. They are having actually zero resistance. So that's an ideal condition. So the entire circuit is actually a lumped circuit. So you can clearly see that this portion here is the R1 ohms. So it is not distributed throughout the wire. So this particular area is this block is 2 ohms or 3 ohms. This type of abstraction is called a lumped circuit abstraction. A lumped circuit abstraction. And the entire course of engineering circuit analysis will deal with lumped circuit abstraction. But where does this distributed circuit abstraction come? Let us take two power lines. These are two towers. So two towers here. Electrical. And these carry electrical cable. So the resistance of this electrical cable is usually specified like 0.1 ohms per kilometer. So it means the resistance is spread throughout the wire. It is not at a particular point. And so 2 kilometers will be 0.2 ohm. 3 kilometers is 0.3 ohm. So this is a distributed network. So in power system we go over the distributed, distributed network and in this course however we will be dealing only with lumped circuits. With that let us start with the first definition which is a node. Alright? The node. What is a node? A node is a point at which two or more, take note, two or more circuit elements have a common connection. Have a common connection. Alright? So let us take this circuit here. Let us take that circuit. Let me just copy that circuit. We will be requiring this circuit in a number of areas. So I will just copy the circuit. Control C. Yeah. I will just paste this circuit here. So let us take this circuit here. So in this circuit, let us see what are what how many nodes are present in this circuit. Alright. Now let us see this particular point here. Intuitively, you can understand that that is a node. Why? Because the circuit element here. Just name it. Take this element here. All right, circuit element number one. Let this be the circuit element number two. This is the circuit element number three. Circuit element number four and circuit element number five. So you have five circuit elements. Let us look at the nodes. This point here. This point here has one, two, three, and four circuit elements connecting to it. Therefore, I will call that as a node. It's our node one. Okay. Let us take this point here. Here also you can see, look at the definition. It is two or more 
circuit elements. So these are two circuit elements which have a common point of connection. So this is our node 2 and clearly this point here is the node 3. Alright, so you are having three nodes in this circuit. Now sometimes people do this to add confusion in the circuit. So if I redraw the same circuit like this, okay, I have just the same circuit which I have redrawn. People might tell that this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, and this is a node. So there are four nodes, but that's not the case. Why? Because these two, these two are the same nodes. Okay, they are the same nodes. Okay, so I have to redraw it once again. Somebody draws a circuit like this. Okay, somebody redraws a circuit like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, but you have to remember that these are the same nodes. Same nodes. These also are same nodes. So effectively, you are always having only three nodes. So in this circuit, I have drawn in three different manners. It does not increase the number of nodes, it just changes the circuit layout. And however, you have to remember that it contains three nodes. You need not worry if you are getting confused because we will doing we'll be doing a number of problems which uh, addresses these issues. Now, the second definition which I want to introduce here is a path. Okay. So what is a path? Path is a path is something you do for for example you are going for a walking. You are going from one point to another point. You have taken a path, right? You have taken a path. I am going from here to a shop. I have taken a path. Similarly, path is nothing but a set of nodes, a set of nodes and circuit elements that we pass through that we pass through when going uh, not going when we, we pass through while moving along the circuit while moving along the circuit what does that mean here? so let me just paste the circuit once again here we yeah. For example, I want to let me mark the nodes as well. This is node 1, this is node 2, and this is node 3. But I want to take a walk around the circuit. Let me start from node 1. Alright. I start from node 1. Okay. I go through the resistance R3. I reach node 2. I go through resistance R4 and I stop at node 3. Alright, so this is a path. So this is a path. So you can clearly see that I can take many paths. Let me take another path. I'm starting from node 1. Alright. I'm going through resistance R1 and I'm reaching node 3. This is another path. The third path I would like to take like this. This is also a path. So you can have a number of paths in a circuit. Now, while taking this path, while taking this path, you have started from a node, right? If you reach the same node, the same node that you started with, that you started with, then that path, then that path is called a loop and that path is called a loop. Loop will come a lot in the engineering circuit analysis. So let me draw a loop here. Control D. So let me mark my nodes once again. So 1, 2, and 3. Let us start from node 1 here. Okay. Let us start from node 1. I'm going through resistance R3, R4, second node, through the resistance uh, node 3, and I have come back to the R1. So the entire path that I have taken is a loop. Okay. Now let me take this one. I'm going from R1. So the node 1, I am reaching node 3, then I am coming back to node 1. This is also a loop. So this is a loop. Okay. And this is also a loop here. We will be doing more problems to understand the difference between path and loop. 
So let us take the third definition. I just want to finish with these definitions. So third one is a branch. Alright? Now, what is a branch? A branch is a simple path. So it's a very simple path that has a circuit element that has a circuit element with two nodes at each end. Each end. Okay, so branch is a simple path that has a circuit element with two nodes at each end. So in a way you see, if you want to find the number of branches in a circuit, all you have to do is count the number of circuit elements, right? So let's take an example here. Let me just paste this circuit once again here. So this is node 1, this is node 2 and this is node 3. Let us take the elements between node 1 and node 3. So the circuit element number 1 which is the ideal circuit, ideal current element, this is a branch, right? This simple path which I can take here, this simple path is a branch. There is also R1 between 1 and 3, so this is also a branch. So two branches, so between 1 and 3 you are having R2, so a, a third branch you are having there. So between 1 and 2 you are having a path here, so that is the fourth branch. Between 2 and 3 you are having another element, circuit element, therefore the number of branches is equal to 5. So if somebody asks you to find the number of branches, all you do is find the number of circuit elements. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The number of branches is equal to the number of circuit elements. Number of branches in a circuit. Number of branches in a circuit is equal to the number of circuit elements in the circuit. Alright? Now, let us take some simple problems now. Let me draw a circuit here. And we will just do one or two problems in this session. So, this is a Ideal circuit element, right? So, yeah. So this is a circuit. I don't want to put any resistance value because we are just going to find the number of nodes here. All right. So you can clearly see that this is going to be a node because you are having three elements connected. However, you can also see that this is also a node because two circuit elements are having a common point, right? So this is node one. This is node 2, this is node 3. So the number of nodes in this circuit will be equal to 3. And how many branches you will have in this circuit? To find the number of branches, just circuit, just count the circuit elements. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the number of branches will be equal to 4. Okay. Now I think I will close this lecture in this session because it is already getting long. In the next lecture, we will do more problems in finding the number of nodes, number of branches and uh, defining path and defining loop etc. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.